Hello, this is The Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun With Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Duca 110. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing a Podigar 924B, and Greg was wearing a Smil 8043. Grogu said that Megs Mayfield finally proposed to Peli Mato, and she said no. Grogu asked her why she turned him down. She said he didn't have a ring, he didn't get down on one knee, and all he said was, how about it, toots? She told him, my name isn't toots, and I'm expecting 18 carats with a K, holding at least 2 carats with a C. He said, the only carrots you're getting from me are glazed in brown sugar with a BS. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. It comes in a watch very similar to what Pagani Designs come in, at least some of them anyway. And then we have their cleaning cloth, which isn't near as good as Pagani Design, but it does say Duca on it. I'm assuming it's Duca and not Ducca, because Ducca would sound stupid. And here's the unsigned warranty card and instructions. And here's the watch. Isn't that a nice looking dial? I really like that dial. This is the third Duca on my channel. They seem to make homage watches on par with Pagani Design and Cadison. This is an homage to a Seiko Frost Monster and they really nailed the Frost Monster dial and the inner portion of the bezel. But the case is nothing at all like a monster case and the edges of the bezel are not near as pronounced as a monster which is not what was shown in the AliExpress ad for this watch. However, the ad did show the plain non-monster case. So as far as a monster homage goes, this watch gets a C- minus due to the case and the bezel. Not everyone cares how well a watch homage is something and some just want a well-built watch that looks nice and if you ignore the fact that this is supposed to look like a monster, it is still a very nice looking watch for the money. If you don't want the Frost Monster gradient dial, there is also a blue, an orange, and a black. They too have the same texture with monster footprints but are a solid color with no gradient effect. The H-Link bracelet is the only option so if you want it on a strap, you will have to buy it separately. The watch is 42.7 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, but 42 millimeters at the case because the bezel overhangs the case just a little bit. It's 51 millimeters lug to lug, so it's got a fairly big lug to lug. But it's only 12 millimeters thick, so at least they kept it thin. Has a 22 millimeter lug width and weighs 150 grams on the supplied metal bracelet with four links removed. Yes, you heard it. I removed four links to fit on my seven and a half inch wrist. The bezel is 120 click unidirectional and the action is really good. Nice clicks, no back play, and everything lines up just great. And not too much resistance, but not too light either. Unfortunately though, if you look at the edges of the bezel, they don't look very monster-like. And uh, which would be a minor complaint but it's kind of a major complaint because if you look at the ad here i'll show you side by side okay there's the watch in the ad and look at that bezel compared to this bezel and then let's look at the from the back look at that overhang compared to the ads overhang that's some serious overhang compared to this so that is not the bezel the bezel on the ad is not the bezel on this watch. Then we have the frost dial with a gradient color and this is really nice. And if you look at closely too, you can see the monster feet climbing up. Yes, that's a copy of the Seiko. The Seiko does that. But I'm pretty sure they only do it on the frost monster. But yeah, I really like this dial. I think the dial turned out great. And then it says Duca up top. Then it says automatic 10 bars, 100 meters on the bottom. So this is just a swimming watch, not a, really a diving watch. And then you have the indices. You got the monster teeth at the 12 and batons everywhere else. This is not the monster style where they make everything look like teeth, which is kind of fun. And then also there's a chapter ring with the minute markers. And then we have a fence post minute hand and then this giant arrow hour hand, which is monster style. And then you have the second hand, 
with a spear tip and then let me get this out of the way so you can see the date and there's the date we got a no cyclops and this is just a single date uh, most monsters have a day date because that's what the Seiko use but not this one because this has a Miyota 821A which doesn't do day date we have a sign screwed on crown it's got the Duca logo there which looks like half a wagon wheel not sure the significance of it uh, thread action isn't bad you don't feel a lot of resistance and it pops nicely uh, skirting it Putting it back down though, it's kind of a pain, just not because of the thread action, but just because the bezel kind of gets in the way. And uh, plus the crown's a little small. It'd be nice if it was a, just a little bit taller, but it's not horrible. And then we have a sapphire flat crystal, and I tested it since there's uh, some shenanigans going on. I wanted to make sure, and yes, it is sapphire. And then we have the case. This is a simple round case. This is not a monster style case. Uh, now they didn't lie about the case in the ad. Because here I'll show you. Look at the back of the watch in the ad. And then look at this case. They match. They only just kind of fibbed about the bezel. But it's a nice case. Uh, the lugs are a little long though. Which makes the lug to lug a little long. But uh but it does wear nice and it's uh, brushed on the sides and it does have a chamfered edge on the lugs and then it looks like it's polished on the bottom but yeah it's not a monster style case but I don't think I would care if it had more of a monster style bezel because the case to me just isn't as important Then we have a screw down case back and it's a coin edge so you'll need uh, coin edge tools to open it. Uh, I The biggest tool I have is 31.5 millimeters and that does not fit this. I think it's 32.5 because it looks like it almost fits. Uh, but it quite possibly could be 33.5 but I'm, I'm thinking 32 but once again I don't have anything larger than a 31.5 to test that. Then it has these hammerhead sharks on the case back. And then it says 10 bar, water resistant, stainless steel. And 110 is the model number. Underneath the case back is the motor 821A. Uh, which is a version of the 8215. Except for it has a nicer... Uh, rotor and it also looks a little bit prettier why they bothered with a uh, Watch that doesn't have a display case back. I don't know uh, They could have stuck with the Miyota 8215 and nobody would have known the difference This is a 21 joule movement that hand wind but does not hack and has a unidirectional rotor Some 82 1a's and some 82 15's do hack, but this one does not I will show you See, doesn't hack. These are workhorse movements though. They're very reliable. And uh, we will put it on the time grapher and see how accurate it is. Here it is on the time grapher. It looks like it's running about 13 to 12 seconds fast. Amplitude's not bad and there's just a little bit of beat error. Not very much. Uh, normally it's it's better to be fast and slow, but this is a non-hacking movement So it really doesn't matter when you adjust the time you're gonna have to move the hands Regardless since it doesn't hack But not bad well within specs The bracelet is an H-link and this is a true H-link not one of them fake ones as you can see it's fully articulating it has solid end links and they're inverted which is good because the lug to lug is pretty big. So you would not want these to be protruding. Uh, these are big links though since it's an H-link. And we have uh, push pin adjusters not screw pins. I'm fine with push pins. 
but unfortunately though, this clasp here is a milled lower pressed upper, but it has a diver's extension. Uh, nobody asked for that. And unfortunately though, the diver's extension takes up all the room in the clasp. So we only have two holes of micro adjust. And unfortunately though, these are really big links. So you really need more than two holes of micro adjust. So that's unfortunate there. I wish they would have put a different clasp on it or get rid of the diver's extension and add a couple more holes. The clasp looks fine. It has the Duca name on it and it's a press button and there's no fold over. And the action's fine. It's just, once again, you, you need another micro adjust when you have links this big. And this is a 150 gram watch. So it, it's, it's got some heft to it. It's not super heavy, but heavy enough where you want a good fit. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It looks nice, it wears nice. And I removed four links to fit this on my wrist. So you'll be able to wear this if you have a huge wrist, especially considering how big these links are. So I bet you could wear this if you had a nine inch without any more links. So yeah, I really like the dial. It's a nice looking watch. I mean, once again, if you didn't think it was trying to look like a monster, you probably wouldn't mind the bezel. Here we are in the loom room. Just wearing it, I didn't notice much loom, so I am not expecting much from this test. As we speed up the time, we see the loom is indeed pretty bad. The indices fade quickly and are already gone. The all-important minute hand doesn't last much longer. Then there goes the hour hand. But look at that loom pip, glowing strong all by itself. I play the song all by myself, but that would get me a copyright violation, and you don't want to hear me sing. What do I like about this watch? Well, I really like the dial. They nailed the dial. That's just a great looking dial. I like the fact that it has a true H-Link bracelet with inverted end links. And I like the fact that they kept the watch fairly thin for a big watch. Uh, for a big automatic, that is. What are my gripes and groans? The ad shows a monster bezel, and this is like a monster light bezel. Uh, useless diver's extension takes up all the room, so we can't have more holes for micro adjust. And the loom is really bad, except for the pip. Do I recommend this watch? Yes, even though there were a little shenanigans with the bezel and the ad, you are getting a solid steel full-size automatic watch with a Japanese movement for under $70. The dial is truly stunning and makes up for the watch's numerous shortcomings. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Duca 110, and I will be back with another review, more than likely that smeal that Grogo is wearing. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.